Shall we lift our hands before the Lord this morning and from the depth of our hearts begin to give God thanks. Thank him for the privilege of being in his presence this morning. Blessed is the man that the Lord chooses and causes to approach him. You are here because he chose you. You are here because he caused you to approach him. And he brought you here to be filled with the goodness of his house. Lord, I'm thankful. I'm grateful. I celebrate you. Glorify your holy name. You are worthy to be praised, to be glorified. Father, thank you. Father, thank you. Father, thank you. Is somebody giving God thanks this morning? Make sure it is coming from your heart before the Lord. I'm grateful, Father. I celebrate you, Lord. You are worthy to be praised. Now begin to ask him to speak to you this morning. Lord, I'm before you to hear from you. Speak directly to me by your word. Establish my change of level by your word. Thank you, Father. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Our Father, we are before you this morning. We are grateful for the privilege you have given us to be in your presence. Lord, we are here to hear from you. To each one present, speak to us. Amen. By your word, let everyone be changed. Amen. And perhaps anyone may be here, Lord, with one chain or the other. According to your word, let the chains be broken. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, mighty God. In Jesus' precious name. Give Jesus a big hand and be seated in his presence. It is my new dawn era. The theme for this month, as was just recently declared to us in that epistle, is God's plan for me is in his book. Can we echo that together? Say it with stronger assurance. And we are going to be looking at this series of teachings in our Sunday services all through the month of March, accessing God's plan for your life from his book. Accessing God's plan for your life from his book. And this is the first part in this series of teachings. But remind that according to scriptures, Isaiah 29 verse 11, which is the anchor scripture for the month, the Bible says, and the vision of all is become unto you as the words that are in a book that is sealed, which men deliver to one that is learned, saying, read it, I pray thee. And he said, I cannot read it because it is sealed. And they hand it to a one that is unlearned and said, read this, I pray thee. And he said, I am not learned. The vision of all is like the words that are written in a book. Let us remember that according to scriptures, the Bible said in Romans chapter 8, verse 29 and verse 30, it said, whom he did predestinate, he said, whom he did foreknow, he did predestinate, those he predestinated, he conformed to the image of his son that he may be, he may be firstborn among many brethren. He said, whom he did predestinate, them he called, those he called, those he, them he justified, and those that he justified, them he also glorified. So according to scriptures, none of us is a creature of chance. Every one child of God is a child of destiny. God has a plan for you. Say with me, God has a plan for me. And the plans of God are detailed in the book of God called the Bible. The Bible says in the book of Je Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 11, I know the thoughts I have towards you, they are thoughts of good, not of evil, to give you an expected end. So very clearly, God has his own thoughts, his own plans concerning your life and concerning my life. So no situation has the permission to dictate your identity. Who you are is revealed in God's word. Who you are is not what men call you, but who you are is what God calls you. Somebody understand that? Say loud, amen. Therefore, we can come to say that the Bible is the creator's manual that shows us who we are what we are worth and what we can do it is the creator's manual that shows us who we are what we are worth 
and what we can do. So your real identity is as unveiled in God's word. It is not as dictated by your, 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 your environment. It is not as dictated by your circumstances. Your real identity is as unveiled in God's word. The Bible makes us to understand in the book of Psalm 100 and verse 3, it said, It is he that made us and not we ourselves. You are not the creator of any human will. You are the creator of God. He made you. And everything concerning you is detailed in his word. So the Bible, therefore, is the only accurate picture of who you are. That is why the Bible makes us understand in the book of James chapter 1 verse 22 to 25. It said, be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. If for he that hears the word and does not do it is like a man who beholds himself in a glass and straight away forgets what manner of man that he was. But he that continues in the perfect law of liberty, not being a forgetful hearer, he sees the picture and is walking in the light of what he sees. He said, that man shall be blessed in his deed. So we must come to understand that we have a responsibility to go into God's word and discover what his word says about you and about me. What is the accurate picture? Because it is only the picture that you see that determines what you ultimately become. Second Corinthians 3 verse 18 he said, we all with open face, we behold him as in a glass, the glory of the Lord, and we are changed into the same image from glory to glory as by the spirit of the Lord. So we see clearly that according to scriptures, God's word, the Bible, is the carrier of the accurate picture of man. Who you are by redemption is located in God's word. Unlike a natural mirror, a natural mirror shows you who you are in the present, your present state. The word of God, which is the spiritual mirror, shows you your perfect state and allows you to become what you see according to his word. So you and I have the responsibility to look in. What does God's word say concerning me? What is the picture that is located in scriptures for me? And when we begin to locate those pictures and walk in the light of it, we become living wonders to our world. For somebody here, I see you becoming a living wonder to your world. Somebody believe it, say loud, amen. amen. This is why the Bible is the accurate guide for the destiny of man. It is the accurate guide. Psalm 119 verse 105. He said, thy word is a lamp unto my feet and it is a light unto my path. It shows me where to go. It shows me what to do. It shows me how to live. For somebody here today, I see your eyes opening up to the light of his word. Amen. You believe it, say louder, amen. amen. I say, you believe it, say louder, amen. amen. And if you look through the scriptures, you see that many of those that walked in destiny located their place in God's word. We start from the example of John the Baptist. John the Baptist was asked in John chapter 1 verse 19 to 23. He said, who is it that you are? Are you Elijah? He said, no. Are you the one of those prophets? He said, no. Are you the Messiah? He said, no. Who are you that we may give answer to those that sent us? What did he say? I am the voice of one that is in the wilderness crying. Prepare the way of the Lord. Where is that located? Isaiah chapter 40. He found his place in the book. How about Jesus? Because the Bible tells us looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. The Bible said in Luke chapter 4 concerning Jesus, beginning from verse 17, he said, they gave unto him the book of Isaiah. And he found the place. Somebody here will find the place. I said, somebody here will find the place. He found the place where it was written. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me. To preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, To preach deliverance to the captive. The recovering of sight to the blind. And to set at liberty them that are bruised. He said to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And the year of, uh, you know, uh, 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 the acceptable year of the Lord. And he closed the book and began to tell them. This day, verse 21, is this thing fulfilled in your eyes. 
So the fulfillment follows the discovery. He found a place and the fulfillment began. For somebody here, this month you will find a place. And this month the fulfillment will begin. You believe it, say louder, amen. I said you believe it, say louder, amen. That is why that book called the Bible must remain the most treasured book in the life of the believer the most treasured book in the life of the believer it carries your picture it shows you your future and shows you how to get there no one here will miss their portion in christ in the name of jesus <laughs> somebody believe me say loud amen. amen now in unveiling the plan of god for your life we must discover a few things that the scriptures show us about ourselves we must come to understand that destiny in the kingdom is a product of discovery. You discover who you are, you don't determine who you are. We go to God's word to see what has he said about you and I. What can we discover? What picture does he have concerning us? And this morning we are going to look at a few of these pictures to help us appreciate the reality of the weight of redemption as it concerns you and me. What is God's plan for you? What has he said concerning you? What has he packaged for you as a child of God? Number one, you are redeemed to walk in dominion. Say with me, I am redeemed to walk in dominion. Come on, say it louder. I am redeemed to walk in dominion. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 5 and verse 6. Look at what the scripture says. Even when we were dead in sins, he said he had quickened us together with Christ. By grace, you are saved. So what he's about to talk about is what happens by reason of salvation. And look at verse 6. He said, and he has raised us up together and made us to sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Where is that place located? Ephesians 1 verse 20 and verse 21. He said, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places. And that is far above how many? All principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named not only in this world but also in that which is to come. He has set him far above and the qualifying word there is all not some all principality all powers every might and dominion and anything that has a name not only in this world but that which is to come the meaning of that is that satan cannot invent something that has permission to conquer you he said anything whether it is in this world or the one to come it means by redemption you are positioned far above every force of the wicked. For somebody here, that redemptive reality shall become your own experience. <laughs> you believe it, say louder, amen. <laughs> the meaning of that is that you are redeemed to walk in dominion. You are redeemed to walk in dominion. Remember that at creation, God's original intention was for man to have dominion. He said in Genesis chapter 1 and verse 26, And God said, Let us make man after our own image and after our likeness, and let him have dominion. Dominion means power over. Power over. Let him have dominion. Power over. Authority over. We see it repeated in verse 28. Let him have dominion. So dominion is God's original intention for man. And that dominion becomes a reality at redemption. In Luke chapter 10 verse 19, he said, Behold, I give unto you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the powers of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. That's what dominion does. It makes you enjoy hot free existence. Shout hallelujah. <laughs> hot free existence. Nothing permitted to touch you. You become a touch not entity. That will be somebody's experience here. Yeah. You believe me say louder amen. Yeah. I said you believe me say louder amen. Yeah. 
you believe it, say it louder. Amen. Amen. That's what dominion is all about. And that is God's original intention concerning you. And for you, that intention shall begin to find expression. From this day forward, no, no assault of the enemy shall ever reach out to you again. You will walk in practical and complete dominion over them in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You believe it, say louder, amen. I say you believe it, say louder, amen. This is God's intention. So he has intended for you and me to live in the realm of dominion. Touch not entities. Unharmable. Unassaultable. Unmolestable. Living a life of dignity by dominion. I see that becoming somebody's experience from now. God's servant, our father, has shared the testimony with us many times how that he came to understand this far above mentality by the testimony of Smith Wigglesworth. And suddenly he said he was called to a meeting to represent someone who could not go. And then entered into the meeting. And with the intoxication of that revelation, he came across those children and said, Now, among all of you here, anyone that is a witch, stand up. And they stood up. He said, No, sit down. I don't mean you are just, uh, they called you a witch, they insulted you as a witch or so forth, or you ate in the night. I mean you are a practicing original witch. Stand up. And they stood up. And he called one of them. He said, what do you do? He said, when we want to take blood, we get on the highway and cause vehicles to some assault. And as the victims begin to bleed out, we take their blood. He said, but what do you do when men like us are coming? 1979. He said, when we sense a higher power on the highway, we clear off. You see, the truth is this. When you begin to see the reality of your dominion, you seize power from the enemy. From today, the devil will never have power over you again. Somebody believe me, say louder, amen. As unintelligent as animals may look, in the bush it is not every plant they eat. Because they know that there are some plants that the day they try to eat it is death. It is poison. So you see the cows, you see the goats, you see the animals roaming around the bush but leaving certain things untouched. Because they have learned by experience that those are untouchable plants. They are in the same forest, in the same bush, but yet not permitted to be touched. I'd like you to understand you may be in the same nation, in the same city, in the same community, the same locality, the same settlement, the same village, but you are not permitted to be touched. Somebody believe it, say louder, amen. I said somebody believe it, say louder, amen. We must capture a genuine picture of our dominion in order to remain in charge on the earth. We must capture it. In the book of Zechariah chapter 12, the Bible makes us to understand something here. Zechariah 12, beginning from verse 2. It said, Behold, I will make Jerusalem a cup of trembling unto all people that are round about. He said, When they shall be in a siege both against Judah and against Jerusalem. And in that day I will make Jerusalem a burdensome stone for all people. All that burden themselves with it shall be cut in pieces. He said, though all the people of the earth be gathered together against it. Cup of trembling means I've made him poison. For anyone that wants to drink him, they try to touch them is to their own devastation. That is the reality of your dominion in Christ. Say with me, I'm untouchable. He said, and I, you'll become a burdensome stone. That anyone who carries you in their heart to look for your trouble, he said they will be caught in pieces. That will be somebody's experience from now. Somebody believe it, say louder, amen. The meaning of that is that you are too big to be pursued in the night in the dream. You are too much for a 700 animal to be pursuing you to knock you down in the dream. No way. By redemption. You are ordained for dominion. Say with me, I'm ordained for dominion. Like you mean it, I am ordained for dominion. Every harassment is coming to an end concerning you. Number two, we discover that you are redeemed 
to reign as a king on the earth. You are redeemed to reign as a king on the earth. Revelation chapter 5 and verse 10. This is what the Bible says. And the song, a new song say. It said he has made us unto our God. And who are the people? These individuals have come from every kindle, every kindred, every tongue, and every people, every nation. And he has made us, verse 10, unto our God, kings and priests. And we shall reign where? Where are we reigning? In heaven? Where? On the earth. We shall reign on the earth don't suspend your reigning to heaven there is only one king in heaven he's called the king of kings jehovah is his name but on the earth he has many kings there are many vacant thrones waiting for you to be seated you are ordained to reign as a king on the earth somebody believe it say louder amen you see you must begin to see the reality of who you are when you see yourself as a king, you carry yourself with royal dignity. You operate with a sense of the dignity of a prince. Say, no, I cannot misbehave. You don't see a king shouting on the road. No way. You don't see a king because somebody just crossed him anyhow on the road. Now come out and fold his trousers and ready to fight. No how. Why? Royal dignity is already operating in his mentality. We must carry royal mentality. God's servant, our father said when he saw this scripture in 1970, he began to ask himself anytime he's going out, is this how a king will go out? And if it does not fit royal identity, he goes back to change. Why? Something has infiltrated his mentality that began to reflect in his identity. We must carry it. The royal identity must be what is saturating our mentality. The Bible says in 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 9, it said, you are a chosen generation. You are what? A royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people. You are not ordinary. You are royalty. It said, you are ordained to show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. You are ordained as royalty. Say with me, I'm ordained as royalty. Come on, say it louder. I'm ordained as royalty. And the root of this royalty is seen in the professed blessing upon the life of Abraham. In Genesis chapter 17, beginning from verse 5 down to verse 7, we are told, the Lord speaking said, Neither shall your name be called Abraham. He said, But Abraham, for a father of many nations, have I made thee. He said, And I will make thee exceeding fruitful, and I will make nations of thee. And what? Kings shall come out of thee. So the, every product of Abraham is either a nation or a king. You are either a nation or a king. You have a royal identity. But the, God, the scripture makes us understand if you are Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and you are an heir to the promise. Galatians 3 and verse 29. So we must come to recognize, therefore, that by redemption we are ordained to live as kings and reign as kings on the earth. That means every area of human endeavor will be seeing us as believers and particularly as members of this family taking the thrones in those various areas. In academics, you shall be enthroned. In career, you shall be enthroned. In business, you shall be enthroned. Every aspect of society, the throne is waiting for you. Somebody believe it, say it loud, amen. Yeah. Number three, you are redeemed to be a blessing and not a burden to your world. You are redeemed to be a blessing and not a burden to your world. By redemption, that's who we are. We are redeemed as a blessing. The Bible makes clear in the book of Genesis chapter 22, verse 16, down to verse 18, concerning Abraham, he said, By myself have I sworn, that because you have done this thing, and has not withheld thy son, thy only son, he said that in blessing I will bless you. In multiplying I will multiply you. As the, uh, you. Multiply your seed as the stars of heaven. And as the sun by the seashore. And your seed will possess the gate of his enemies. He said and in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be what? Be blessed. Not burdened. But be blessed. So every seed of Abraham. Which is what we are in redemption. 
are ordained as blessings on the earth. Galatians 3 verse 13 and 14, Christ has redeemed us, those who are saved, those who are born again, from the cause of the law, being made a cause for us, for it is written, cause is everyone that hangs on the tree, that the blessing of Abraham may come upon the Gentiles, and we may receive the promise of the Spirit by faith. We see here, therefore, that by redemption, the blessing of Abraham, to live life as a blessing and not a burden, is what is ordained for us in redemption. So every child of God is ordained a blessing. From today, wherever you are located, you shall be found as a blessing. In your community, you shall be a blessing. In your various cells, you shall be a blessing. Your various units, you shall be a blessing. In your company, you shall be a blessing. Wherever you are located, you shall be a blessing. Somebody believe me, say loud, amen. That's what it means. So by redemption, you are ordained to live as a blessing. There is a covenant of blessing upon your life by redemption. God ensured that by redemption, there was a conversion of everything that stood like a cause to bring you to the point of blessing. And therefore, from this day forward, I see the blessing of the Lord, the one that makes rich and add no sorrow, manifesting practically upon your life. Yeah. Wherever you are, that blessing shall keep speaking. Yeah. You believe it, say louder, amen. Yeah. I said, you believe it, say louder, amen. Yeah. Very quickly now, today, this is a covenant day of marital breakthroughs. God has brought us here among other things, to establish the marital breakthrough testimony of everyone desiring such. And I'd like us to recognize that to everyone, no matter your state, there is a package from heaven for you. You are waiting on the law for marriage. God has miracle marriage is waiting for you. Yeah. Perhaps you are already married and the marriage is not the way it ought to be. God has a package of marital turnaround for you. Yeah. Maybe the marriage seems to have broken down already and all hope seems lost. God has a package of marital restoration for you. Yeah. And perhaps the going is good and the journey is sweet. God has a package of marriage enhancement for you. Yeah. That means it shall get sweeter and sweeter for you. Yeah. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. But let's begin by recognizing that the word of God is the cheapest way to experience deliverance. Deliverance takes place by the word. Proverbs chapter 11 and verse 9. The Bible tells us this. It said, through knowledge, the just shall be delivered. Deliverance is not by any awkward practice. You don't need to be beaten with broom to be delivered. Deliverance is simply the result of an encounter with the word. In Luke chapter 4 verse 18, look at how Jesus handled deliverance for the people. He said, this is my ministry and my assignment. The spirit of the Lord is upon me and he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. And how do I handle deliverance? To preach deliverance to the captives. So deliverance is by the word. It's by what? It's by the word. That is why I know that no matter what siege you may have come under before this service, because you are here in God's presence, hearing his word, your hour of deliverance has finally come. Somebody believe it, say louder, amen. I said somebody believe it, say louder, amen. And I called to worship this morning from the book of Psalm chapter 68. The Bible makes clear in verse 6 there. It said, he set the solitary in families. <laughs> he bringeth forth those which are bound in chains. It doesn't matter what chains you may have been tied down in. By the word of the Lord this morning, your liberty is supernaturally established. <laughs> and the reason why this is so, is that every true deliverance is a product of encounter with the light of the world. Remember that the enemy's strength is in darkness. 
It's called the power of darkness. The Bible record, records and refers to his operation as the hour and the power of darkness. That's his operation. Remember the scripture says in Ephesians 6 and verse 12, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Rulers of the darkness, he can only rule in darkness. So what gives you liberty is light. The Bible says in John chapter 1 verse 1 to 5, in the beginning was the word, the word was with God, and the word was God, the same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of man, and the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness cannot comprehend it, cannot handle it, cannot hold it. They don't advise a person not to touch fire because it is a consuming force. By the power of the word, this morning, the fire of the Almighty shall consume every shackle. You believe it? Say louder, amen. That is why the Bible says you shall know the truth, and the truth will make you. You shall know the truth. You see, it's one thing to be prayed for, it can bring liberty. But it's another thing to be set free by the word. To be set free by the word. To be set free by the word. And setting, being set free by the word is being given the key for liberty. You have the key of a door. You can no longer be imprisoned by it. You have the key to it. And today the key to your liberty maritally is being put in your hand. You shall never be imprisoned again. Somebody believe it, say loud, amen. I said, somebody believe it, say loud, amen. Quickly, let's note the following. We must recognize first, God is the author of the institution of marriage. God is the author of the institution of marriage. Genesis 2.18, the scripture makes, it understand, makes us understand. God said, it is not good for man to be alone. I will make him and help meet for him. God is the author. God is the marriage maker. He is the author, the originator of marriage, of marital breakthroughs. He was the institutor of it, and he's the one who remains in charge of it. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. I said shout hallelujah. hallelujah. And that means, therefore, that God's plan is for every one of his children who desires to be married to experience this marital breakthrough. It is God's plan. It is God's agenda. God is not standing against your marital desire. It is God's plan and God's agenda for anyone who desires it to experience this marital breakthrough. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Proverbs 18 and verse 22, the Bible makes it clear. He that finds a wife has found a good thing and has obtained favor from the Lord. So God makes it very clear to you and to me that we are expected for, for to experience marital breakthrough when we desire it it is god's package for us and the favor required for it is already made available by redemption because psalm 5 verse 12 tells us he said that will bless the righteous and with favor surround him as with a shield and we are the righteousness of god in christ jesus so we are creatures of favor ordained for marital bliss and for sort anyone who is desiring marital breakthrough I see the favor required for it being delivered and manifested practically in the name of Jesus. That means no more marital delay for you. I said that means no more marital delay for you. No matter who has written your case off, for you it will be turned to an open testimony. Somebody believe it, say loud amen. So God has packaged marital testimony for every one of his children. It means that every believer has the right to fulfill his or her marital destiny. And you will fulfill your own in the name of Jesus. I say you will fulfill your own in the name of Jesus. You will fulfill your own in the name of Jesus. This is so important. You must understand you have a right because God has made provision. You have a right. He said, I will make and help meet for him. But it's important to also note that many individuals stand as the hindrance to their own marital testimony. 
Because the meek will he guide in judgment and the meek will he teach his way. If, you are too, if everybody you see is too small for you, then perhaps you are too small for anyone. The meek will he guide in judgment. The meek will he teach his way. You must settle down. The scripture makes it clear for a man. Say, he that findeth a wife, findeth a good thing, and has obtained favor from the Lord. Let our pursuit be based on scriptural truth. Let it be based on scriptural truth. We must refuse to put on scriptural, you know, uh, criteria for our marital testimony. And that's part of the reason why many people are maritally hindered. They become the barrier to their own advancement. For a woman, somebody approaches you, comes to you, and you size him up, you eye him from top to down, top to down, top to down. By the time you do that, by the third time, it tells you, thank you, sister, God bless you. It is well with you. Because by reason of your response, you have put a barrier between you and that person. Please hear this. Two magnets that attract to each other, when turned, they will repel from each other. If you turn the wrong attitude of pride, you will push away your destiny partner. We must stoop down in humility. Don't become the enemy of your own advancement. Don't become the enemy. Stop setting on reasonable and, you know, on scriptural standards. The woman said, well, the kind of man I must marry, he must have his own house, cannot be renting, must be driving his own car, cannot be going on bus, he must be living inside a comfortable estate. He must have television, deep freezer, fridge, and minimum 10 kVA generator. Is somebody getting it now? We must set scriptural standards. In most cases, the standards people set are heavily unreasonable. Heavily unreasonable. And please hear this and hear it very well. If you keep pushing those God brings your way, Satan will soon bring one your way. And that is why we must ensure that we keep things based on the word of God. You find many people in our day and day today compromising. The Bible is clear. Don't be unequally yoked with unbeliever. Don't explain it away. Is he born again? He goes to church sometimes. He's not born again. That's the meaning. Let it be somebody who fits the standard of God in order to enjoy bliss. I pray that for each one of us, whatever may have been put as personal barricades to your advancement be removed in the name of Jesus. I said, may it be removed in the name of Jesus. The Bible is clear. Every good thing, including peaceful, blissful, and settled marital life, is God's desire for us. The Bible is clear concerning it. He said he will not withhold good from them that walk uprightly. That is God's desire for us. He wants to give you every good thing. But you and I must do what is necessary. In a family, for example, if you want peace and serenity to reign, the scripture is clear. Husbands, do what? Love your wife. Wife, do what? Submit to your husband. There is no new generation perspective that can change the stand of scriptures. If the wife will not submit because she is now part of the women liberation movement, the truth is that that house will remain under fire. We must be careful in our generation, particularly this feminist generation, where it is a tussle between man and woman who is in charge and on top. The Bible is clear. Woman, do what? Submit. Submit to your husband as unto the Lord. In other words, as you are submitting to him, be seeing Christ. Jesus, so I'm submitting to you through this man. Anyone who cannot submit to their husband is not submitting to Christ. That's the, that's the reality of scriptures. 
That's the reality of scriptures. What does he say also? He said, man, do what? Love your wife. Love your wife. Stop keeping diary of offenses. There are many individuals, once something happened, they bring the record. He said, that's how you did it also, I remember. In fact, the day of the wedding, you did it on the, inside the reception. That's what you did. They bring out the book of records. Can you imagine if every time you went to Jesus in prayer, Lord, this is my desire. I want this. And Jesus said, wait, let me bring the record. The truth is that by our record, no man can stand before God. So, husband do what? Love your wife. How? As Christ loved the church. What gives us confidence in coming to Christ is the fact that his love has covered the multitude of our sins. So you too, let your love do what? Cover the multitude of our sins. Please hear this and hear it very well. God didn't give you a perfect husband. Neither did he give you a perfect wife. You are the instrument of perfection. So do your work. Is somebody hearing? You are the instrument of perfection. So do what? Do your work. You know what he said when he created the wife for man? He said, I gave him a help meet. What does help mean? The person need help. So you are there to provide help in those areas you call imperfect. Is somebody getting it? So do your work. Do your work. Be the instrument through which perfection is issued out. For somebody here, I see grace coming upon your life. No matter what your situation or story may be, it is turning out for a testimony. You believe it, say it louder, amen. I say you believe it, say it louder, amen. You believe it, say the loudest, amen. Let's come to realize, particularly as we begin to come to a close, that our commitment to stewardship is a platform for the release of our marital destiny as far as scriptures are concerned. Why? You will serve and God will bless. Every blessing of God answers to stewardship. Your commitment to serving God commits God to servicing you. And one of the ways he services your life and destiny is by the release of your marital testimony. For somebody here, particularly in this season, as we get sold out in the pursuit of God, I see each one experiencing their own marital breakthrough. We had a testimony that was read to us in one of the earlier services. Two sisters, they went out, serving God, pursuing after souls, trusting God for the settlement of their marital de testimony. And each one of them got married the same month, the two of them. Why? They broke it through service. As you are serving God in this season, every prison door will be broken open. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And anyone under any siege of separation, whatever the situation may be, the God of restoration will visit you supernaturally. Therefore, I charge you again this morning, seek the kingdom of God first. And all these things, including marital bliss, marital settlement, marital testimony, will become your experience. You believe it, say aloud, amen. amen. Every cause and every siege over any life is broken today. Amen. Lift up your hand before the Lord and give him thanks. Appreciate him, glorify him, and honor him. Thank him for his word. Thank you, Father. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Amen. You believe, say aloud, amen. amen. Before we move further this morning and receive prophetic blessings, Wherever you are, if you are not yet born again, salvation is not by assumption. It is a reality. It is an encounter with Christ that is unmistakable. If you have not had that encounter with Christ yet, you have not surrendered your life to Jesus in truth and in deed. You have not had the assurance of salvation inside of you that is unshakable. This is your own opportunity. Wherever you are, quickly rise your feet now. You want to give your life to Jesus? You want to have a new beginning with him? Quickly rise your feet now. I want to pray with you. It's your moment, it's your hour, it's your day. God has brought you for this reason and this purpose. Refuse to allow anything hold you down. Quickly rise your feet all over this place. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Also, there are those who are here who need to rededicate their lives to Jesus. Something has gone wrong somewhere along the line and you know you need a new beginning. Somehow, you have lost touch. Inside your heart, 
you have lost that genuine connection the reality of your salvation is lost it can be returned and recovered by your decision if you want to return to jesus recommit your life to him and rededicate yourself to him quickly rise on your feet also i want to pray with you you want to rededicate your life to jesus quickly right now on your feet everywhere on your feet everywhere god bless you give jesus a big hand everybody as they rise everywhere it's worthy of praise it's worthy of glory thank you lord please in both the first and second call make your way to the aisle closest to you officials please assist them and guide them quickly make your way to the aisle closest to you and i will pray with you from that point i will pray with you from there give jesus a big hand everybody he's saving he's delivering he's setting free he's worthy to be praised thank you lord quickly get to the aisle and for a moment please suspend filling your form and just lift up your right hand before the lord and from the depth of your heart make this confession of faith say after me lord jesus louder lord jesus i come to you today as a sinner i know you died for me on the third day you rose again jesus come into my life as my lord and savior take control of me from this day forward now i know that i am born again thank you lord for saving me in jesus name amen keep your hand lifted father in the name of jesus i thank you for these precious ones they have come in response to your call let the grace that has brought each one of them keep them in you all the days of their lives and let every blessing of redemption answer for each one of them thank you mighty god in jesus precious name we have prayed congratulations it's a new day for you please make sure your form is completed and submit it to the official we have our foundation class that takes place on Monday evenings. Two Mondays only you have to attend and then it will set you on course for a colorful journey in Christ. Welcome to the family of God. It is your own time for a turnaround. Shout hallelujah. Please ensure your forms are submitted before you get seated. Be blessed. Shall we all rise on our feet?